Hello folks, today is Friday, May 10th, 2019. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, here to talk about the video game news that has been going on this week. I apologize if my voice is a little messed up. I'm a little under the weather, but we got a lot of stuff to talk about. And the first story I thought you guys would find pretty interesting is this little ditty about EA. CEO of EA, Andrew Wilson, just recently went on a earnings call and uh, talked about the approach to the way they release games. It seems like they're rethinking their approach after Anthem, which we've talked about a million times. Seems like they thought it was gonna go one way, but it was a bit more of a disappointment for them. Andrew Wilson from EA's quotes here are pretty interesting. First of all, he said that the way they're releasing games and the way they have to rethink things isn't just an EA problem, it's an industry problem, and I, I do agree with that. But a lot of the stuff they're talking about is more of live service stuff, but the overall approach I thought was pretty interesting is that they're thinking of just changing the way they drip feed a hype cycle to build up excitement for the game and focus more on soft launches similar to how some mobile games do, which is weird. He said, and I quote, as games have gotten bigger, that system isn't working as well. So what you should expect from us is that it's not just about changing the development processes, but it comes down to changing how we launch games. You should expect that we start to test things like soft launches. And this part of the quote is the most interesting. And it also comes down to changing how we communicate with players. Our entire marketing organization now is moving out of presentation mode and into conversation mode and changing how we interact with players over time. He's saying that they hope with that, that games will just be better, run better, and that people buying the games will understand exactly what it is that they're going to be playing and how they're going to be playing both on the day of launch and over time. I still think at the end of the day, EA needs to prove themselves with action more than words, but I think this is a step in the right direction, especially if they're gonna keep leaning on live service games as much as some of us don't want those or like those style of games. I think they do need to rethink the approach and how they market them, how they sell them, stuff like that. But of course, I pass the question over to you guys. I wanna know how you guys think about this. How are you feeling about these experiences being less about hype and more about actual player interaction and communication? I think that could go a long way because right up until Anthem's release, I still wasn't quite sure what the game was. And briefly, before we move forward, this episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Now, we're genuinely down with this and happy to talk about this because as you probably know, a lot of times on our videos, we talk about internet security, uh, gaming privacy, stuff like that. So this just makes sense. Using a VPN is great for online safety, especially to protect yourself from some of those bad eggs in the gaming world. Seriously, when you're out there gaming with a VPN, it's good to know you have that extra level of security. Uh, your IP address isn't wide open and you're safer from DDoS attacks. Or maybe you're out there in the wild, out in the open, and you want to browse more securely on your phone or on a public Wi-Fi network, that's big for me. I played Watch Dogs. I don't want that stuff to happen to me. ExpressVPN is the market leader for VPNs and it comes in at under $7 a month once you factor in that three months free. You can also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. With that, take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by going to this link. It's in the description. That's expressvpn.com slash gameranks. And thanks again to them for sponsoring this video. Thank you very much for that. But one of the biggest stories this week was uh, the next... PlayStation State of Play. This is the PlayStation style Nintendo Direct video where uh, they release it and there's new announcements. Uh, the first one was considered a failure by a lot of people, massively disliked. I don't know what people were expecting. These types of things don't always really excite me that much. But the new one dropped just Thursday and it was uh, pretty short and sweet. We got some new looks at some things, including some indie games, but the big highlights I have right here. First of all, a new Monster Hunter World expansion called Iceborne releasing in September that I'm pretty pumped about. I'm looking to jump back in. I doubt this is going to be a PlayStation exclusive, but an asymmetric multiplayer game, uh, basically from the Predator movie, a Predator Hunting Grounds. I'm a fan of Predator 1 and 2, so I'm curious to see what that team can do with it, considering uh, the Friday the 13th game, as much as people did dunk on it, I thought it was pretty cool. It had a lot of potential to be even better. They really cracked the code on like how it would be to play as Jason, and I'm curious to see if they can pull it off with a Predator. That's apparently coming in 2020, but speaking of release dates, Medieval is releasing on October 25th. That's the, the remake of the original PlayStation Classic. Uh, we also got an announcement for this game called Away. This is sort of like an animal survival game. I've seen other games in this nature before that have been indie hits, but this one's really cool with a very unique little creature that you play as and you have to hide from bigger animals in a post-apocalyptic world. I'm really, really interested and I can't wait to see more of that. I'm always down for just different experiences. Yo, you wanna play as a little squirrel man? Little, uh, little oh, flying? A little sugar glider? Was that what it was? He looked like a it raccoon, like a raccoon dog I don't know, it's thing. a cool little animal. <laughs> I'm so sick. <coughs> but the last thing that they revealed, the biggest thing, of course, was a new look at the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Tom, it's time to talk about Final Fantasy VII. Can you behave yourself? What, are you gonna talk about a bad video game? Oh, I will say, Final Fantasy VIII is better. Yes. I like, shout out Squall, friend of the show. 
He's not. He's not even real. He's not even a real human. We got a new look. We got English voice acting. We got cutscenes. We got character designs that I'm down with. I really like the way uh, they all look. Got a quick peek at Squall, which is pretty. Not Squall. He looks like it. Not really. I know. If only. <laughs> got a quick peek at Sephiroth. Uh, just just from the back. Got a little bit of gameplay. I still, I really, it should be, it should be turn-based, damn it. I don't agree with that design choice, but that's their choice, so whatever, I'll still play it. Got a little bit of music. I, I think this is looking to be shaping up like a lot of people are wanting, uh, but Square Enix did also reiterate that they're still doing the episodic thing, the way it's being released, where it's going to release full, huge chunks of full-fledged games. It's going to be broken up. That was another thing with the game being silent for so long, I was hoping that they would rethink that approach, but that's all we really got. It was really a brief taste where apparently going to hear more in June, which I assume would be for E3. This is a long time coming. They've been working on this thing for a million years, and I'm curious to see if it actually <laughs> releases this year. Now, in other news, I'm sure a lot of you guys who follow this stuff closely have already heard about this, but a U.S. senator is introducing a bill to potentially ban loot boxes and pay to win microtransactions. Yes, we've heard about it happening in Europe. We've heard about it uh, happening in various countries and going through and being approved and being a thing. And now it could possibly be happening in the United States. Senator Josh Hawley, a Republican from Missouri, announced a bill that would ban loot boxes and pay to win microtransactions, specifically geared toward this whole thing, uh, just trying to keep it away from kids under 18. His quote is, when a game is designed for kids, game developers shouldn't be allowed to monetize it addiction, and when kids play games designed for adults, they should be walled off from compulsive microtransactions. Pretty sound logic, can't really argue with that. I am very curious to see how far this goes, because every day a senator can introduce a bill, but unless they have support, it's not going anywhere. So we'll just have to keep an eye on it. That's really it. In other news, though, we got a big official reveal, a cinematic trailer, and gameplay for Ghost Recon Breakpoint, a new Ghost Recon game, and it's finally starting to make me feel old, because I've been playing Ghost Recon from the beginning, and I don't really know what I want from a Ghost Recon game anymore, but it looks to take some of the elements that it really figured out from Ghost Recon Wildlands, a game which got better and better over time with updates and content, and focus it and hone it in on a fictional island. A little bit more emphasis on stealth action. You can cover yourself in mud and camouflage. Uh, there is a lot of a co-op focus, which I like to just play alone, so there's that. The movement and the combat and just third person action in general, I'm always a fan of, so I am curious. John Bernthal is going to be the villain and I really appreciate the way they set that up in a thing in Wildlands from last week. That's awesome. But I will say like the villains, the look, the, the drones, everything, I wanna play as the villains. They look 10 times cooler than just regular beard bro man. Not bro man, the Twitch streamer. I'm saying like he's like a bro dude here. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more to be revealed about it, but the game's release date is October 4th. So that's something to look forward to. I bring this up too, because like I said, I've been playing, I love all the Ghost Recon games. So I'm curious to see what you guys think. Maybe you just came in for Wildlands. What are you thinking? Maybe you've been playing since the original when there was no gun on screen or Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter. I wanna know what you guys think, because this is interesting, but let's move on. Now in other news, what's going on the Xbox side of the world. We talked about PlayStation. Uh, Xbox has been teasing something Game of Thrones to be revealed. A lot of us here at the office, we were thinking that they were making some Xbox exclusive Game of Thrones licensed game. But what it does seem like is the case are, are two very awesome custom Xbox consoles, Game of Thrones themed, that they're giving away. They're also just Xbox One S all digital editions. They're not even Xbox One Xs. They really tease this thing up on social media, like with changing their icon and their banner. I thought something crazy was gonna go down. This is cool, but uh, not really what I was hoping for. Console's pretty cool though. Not gonna lie though, I don't, I don't, watch, I don't watch Game of Thrones. Can you believe that? I am gonna get so much crap. But now let's do the thing we do every week. Uh, we round up some things you guys may have missed in terms of news over the course of the week. It's all linked in the description below. Uh, the first thing is an article. Some interesting reading because, you know, we should be well read on these things. This is a very interesting approach. It's not as in-depth or as long as I wanted, but it's a look at like what it takes to design really gory stuff in games like Mortal Kombat fatalities. It's a very two-sided thing. There are some people that are deeply, deeply affected by doing research and staring at skeletons and making blood all day. And there are other people that can completely put it out of their mind and just do their work. I, I find it fascinating. The other thing linked below is the long awaited documentary about the making of the new God of War. It's called Raising Kratos. It is a feature length documentary published by PlayStation. I'm curious. I haven't watched this yet. I'm going to sit down and watch it this weekend. If any of you out there managed to already cram this in and watch it since it was released, I'm very curious to see what you guys think. But we also have a trailer for John Wick 
Hex. Now, full disclosure, of course, I think in a perfect world, some of us would really just want this awesome third person, first person John Wick action game. But if we're not going to get that, I think this is absolutely the next best thing. This is more of a strategy focused game with a bit of a cartoonish art style, but it seems like it nails the John Wick feel. It's also uh, being made by Mike Bithel, legendary developer. Hello. If you played anything like Volume or his latest uh, story focused subsurface circular style games, I think this is a good meld of the stuff he's been working on recently, and I'm looking forward to playing this because I just, I love John Wick. Honestly, at the end of the day, I don't care what type of game it is. If it's got John Wick's name on it, I'm going to try it. Also, I mean, it is coming out next week. Holy crap. Uh, we, we got a launch trailer for Rage 2. That's also all linked in the description below. But moving on, an interesting story I thought some of you guys would find uh, uh, pretty wild. Uh, PC gaming wise, according to figures and analysts, uh, PC Gamer is reporting on there will soon be more PC gamers in China than the total population of the United States. You should absolutely check it out and read it. It goes a little bit more in depth in, in the numbers game, but it's like a $16 billion growing insane industry. It's all kind of snowballing because there is already a massive and still growing mobile gaming market in China, but uh, but the rise of so many games uh, from esports to competitive games to online games to a lot of PC free-to-play games, which are still the big focus there, uh, things are just blowing up. Now, you might say, like, I don't live in China. What does this mean to me? I, I do think it's interesting to just keep an idea of, of trends, uh, especially for companies that are trying to market games to everywhere, including China. This is interesting. Every once in a while in the movie industry, you see things intersect with uh, the growth of China and uh, American cinema in little subtle ways here and there, and I'm curious to see if that's going to uh, translate to games. Again, that's all food for thought, but I'm also getting rapidly sicker as we record this episode, so I'm gonna leave it at that with you guys. But before we go, we gotta do that console giveaway we do every single week. You know how this goes down by now. There's a link in the description below. You click it to sign up, you enter once, then you're entered for good, and then every single week we go in and randomly choose one person to win a free console of their choice. And this week's winner is gonna be this person right here. Congratulations, be sure to keep an eye on your inbox, your spam box, stuff like that, because we're gonna be reaching out to you to find out how we could send you your free stuff. But now some interesting things to think of when you go down to the comments. Uh, how do you feel about Ghost Recon Breakpoint? Me personally, I almost wish the game was called Recon Ghost Point Break. That's also not my joke, I heard that on Twitter somewhere. Anyway, they should make a Point Break game, shouldn't they? I mean, that would be so awesome. Uh, uh, where, where was I? Are you going to see Detective Pikachu this weekend? That's releasing. I want to know what you guys think about that. Also, with EA going on the record talking about they need to change their approach dramatically, you think they're actually going to do it? You think it's all talk? I think the numbers this time are what's actually scaring them because of what Anthem did and how presumably they might take a loss on it. Let's talk about any of this stuff down in the comments. I'll be down there talking to you guys as much as possible, but if you got anything else for me, any news tips, any stories, or if you just want to yell at me, hit me up on Instagram and Twitter at Jake Baldino. But of course, thank you guys for coming around and watching us every Friday. We really appreciate it. We're also live every Tuesday at 4 p.m. EST. I won't be on the show next week, but the guys will. They'll be holding it down. I'm also working on a lot of before you buys this weekend for you guys, including Rage 2 and Plague Tale, a game which should maybe be on your radar. But if you enjoyed... Uh, uh, thank you for watching. Clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. It, it really does. We appreciate that. But if you're new, consider subscribing and hitting the notification button because we put out videos every single day. But hey, as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me.